Hello and welcome to the third lesson of Sociological Functions of Education. So today we're going to look at comparing and contrasting the three main sociological theories that we've done. So this is Marxism, Feminism and Functionalism. So we're going to look at what they think about education and then hopefully try and look at applying this to an exam question. This is I think about the fourth or fifth time I've tried to do this video. Um, the cat has now decided he's coming in the room so we'll see how we go. If you do hear random meows, it's Graham. So, as a starter, can you name four sociologists that we've looked at so far for the education topic? So I'll try to give some pictures for hints, but see if you can remember who they are. Feel free to look back uh, if you want to. Also, as with previous videos, feel free to pause them, work through at your own pace. There are loads of ways you can do this lesson. Uh, the way I've done it previously in class is to have a double page in your exercise book, split it into three columns, and then have your three headings, so functionalism, Marxism, feminism, with a section for evaluation at the bottom. Evaluation could only be one or two kind of brief points. It doesn't have to be massively detailed. You could also do this on an A3 paper if you want to. It's not quite enough to have a full A4 page each, um, or you can do it on the computer if you want to do it that way as well. So whatever works for you, go for it. So for each section, I'm going to give you some brief bullet points of what they think as a kind of summary and talk through some ideas, and then feel free to pause, note down some key ideas, and then overall this should give you a nice summary page that when you're using this for a revision. So what do functionists think? So they think that there is a clear link between education and other institutions, so like the family workplace. So think about when we did about Parsons, the bridge, everything kind of links. They also think it's an important agency of socialisation. So not as important as the family, but still quite an important one. It's going to give you a lot of your norms and values. They also think it helps social stability and social cohesion. So by having education, it means that we're all on the same page. It helps society stick together a little bit better. It also prepares you for adulthood, for working life. It kind of gives you what, what to expect, really. And it's passing on those core values of society. So it also, according to functionists, would teach you specialist skills for work. So this could be about kind of your norms and values but it could also be about things like your literacy numeracy those kind of things. Durkheim would argue then so one of your key people that you've got to remember and we'll do homeworks on him um, probably in year 11 just to keep it fresh argues that society schools are societies in miniature so they're very similar to what the rest of society is like and then Parsons is our other key person and he says about schools being like the bridge between home and society. So they're kind of your key arguments. So again, feel free to pause, note down what you need. So, evaluation. Again, if you think about what we did for the family, we talked about, well, functions only really see the positive, and obviously there are lots of negatives of education. So, they really ignore the inequalities that exist within education. So, many groups in society achieve much lower results than others, whether it's based on ethnicity, gender, social class, and functionists don't really kind of look at any of that. They also ignore the negative experiences that some pupils have at school. So for instance, some students will experience racism within school. Some students will experience discrimination or bullying. There's lots of different examples. So education is not really beneficial for everyone. So feel free to add some key bits to your evaluation. So you should have a nice detailed column now for functionalist views of education. So, Marxists. They're obviously the exact, kind of the exact opposite of functionalists. So where functionists see the positive, Marxists are going to see the negative sides of education. So, they see it's preparing you for capitalism. You're getting ready to go into that workforce. You are being socialised into your social positions, whether that's proletariat or bourgeoisie, you're being socialised into going into the workforce. It is not meritocratic. So, while functionalists are like, yeah, if you all work hard, you can all achieve. Marxists are like, no, 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 that is a myth. 
you be, people want you to think if you work really hard you can achieve but actually no you're not going to and your social position is already decided so the education system then acts as a means of social control it makes you conform makes you stay in your social position so you were taught in school that you have to ex uh, respect and obey the people in a higher position than you you have to expect that there are punishments if you don't conform so all of that is taught to you through education and a lot of that is done through the hidden curriculum so for instance having uniform to kind of show the different social positions having a hierarchy, having punishments, all those kind of things is done through the hidden curriculum. And your key sociologist for, fun, uh, for Marxism sorry, is Bowles and Gintis. So I always like to remember Bowles and Gintis as Bowl, Bowl, Gintis, it sounds like Gint does pasties. So I remember Bowl full of pasties and it helps me remember Bowles and Gintis. And they argue that school mirrors the workplace. So this is the idea that school and the workplace are very similar, that it's kind of preparing you for the workplace by making education very similar. And they call this the correspondence principle, how they correspond to each other, how they're very similar. It's a really posh word, but it just means that they're very similar and they're pretty much the same. So again, add this, some key ideas to your Marxism column. Again, feel free to pause. So, evaluation then. How can we critique the Marxist view? So, functionalists basically criticise Marxists by saying that, well, education is meritocratic. You know, if you are at a state school, so like Little Over, you can still achieve as well as students in grammar schools in the best schools in the country because it's about how hard you work, not necessarily your social position. So functionists would say, you know, you all have the capabilities. Everyone in that room has the capabilities of getting a nine. And Marxists assume that you have no real ability to make choice or control over what happens to you. But yet, you know, many working class children are very successful in education and work. So it's not necessarily about being just born into your social position. They also exaggerate the extent to at which you know schools provide a qualified workforce a lot of companies would argue that schools don't provide a qualified workforce that actually you need to be further trained and re-educated when you get into the workplace and the Marxist approach fails to consider other factors so it doesn't ever really look at things like gender or ethnicity it mostly focuses on social class and it really only looks at the negative sides of school. It doesn't look at any of the positive functions of education. I'm sure lots of you could come up with negatives, but there are huge amounts of positives for education, and Marxism doesn't really cover that. So again, feel free, add to your column. So, I think what's helpful at this point is to look at what are the similarities and differences, because although Marxism and functionalism are very two opposing different theories, there are a lot of similarities and differences, and particularly when you come to do your kind of essay question, it's good to have a bit more of a wider view. So, some similarities then are that they both look at the big picture. They look at how education interacts with the rest of society. They both kind of think that education is important. It shapes your norms, attitudes and values, whether that's a good way or a bad way. And they both see education as preparing pupils for work. So a popular 12 mark question is about is the function of education for preparing you for either the workplace or capitalism and for that question you can obviously use both Marxism and functionalism to say well it does kind of prepare you for work. However the differences are that functionists see the positives about education and see the kind of benefits of society whereas Marxists are very much critical about that. Functionalists see education as kind of meeting the demands of the economy but in a positive way that helps everybody whereas Marxists are like well it does support capitalism but only to benefit the ruling classes so you've got to understand what the similarities and differences are because there are kind of crossovers which does make it a bit more confusing but we'll go through it again the third theory that we're going to look at is feminism so we're going to do a little bit on this but most of this we're going to do when we come to Graham! Uh, hey. Sorry. So, feminists believe, obviously, that there are inequalities in education, that boys and girls do not have the same experiences of education. So, this 
could come down to subject choice. So there is something called gendered subject choice, which is that girls are more likely to pick certain subjects and boys are more likely to pick certain subjects. We'll come on to this in a little bit more detail later. So part of this as well is Graham, don't scratch in. Education plays a role in the socialisation of boys and girls. So this is normally at primary school, but you learn what it is to be a boy, what it is to be a girl at primary school. So now, girls massively outperform boys at pretty much all levels, but feminists would still argue that this reinforces patriarchal views of society and leads girls into lower paid jobs when they leave school. So, although girls are doing better in school, actually in society they're still not still not on a level pegging with, with males, really. So, if you think about achievement then, up until about the mid-90s, boys achieved better. There was some education reforms and girls started to improve. And we'll look at some of the reasons for that later. But feminist beliefs, girls were overlooked. And there was originally a heavy focus on boys' achievement. And I think we've kind of moved to that kind of today that, well, girls do well in education, so we'll just leave them to it and we'll focus on boys. And we're kind of at that point now, I think, again. So since girls started to improve, feminists have focused more on the subjects that boys and girls choose and then the jobs that they lead to when they kind of leave. So girls choose subjects that are considered more female subjects. So, for example, things like textiles, even sociology, um, dance would be considered more female-heavy subjects. So I did dance GCSE and there was only one boy in my group. Um, for instance, computing uh, would be considered maybe a more boy-heavy subject, um, engineering, things like that. Particularly when you get to A-levels, sciences and maths are often also considered more he male-heavy subjects. And fo feminists then focus on women's position in society, considering then the issues of gender more broadly. So they're looking at how do women fit into society rather than more broader issues, but we'll come to this later. So if you have a look at these graphs, I'll give you a minute to pause, have a little think, what do they show? So, if you look at graph number one, you can see from about 1991, females were ahead of males in terms of A stars and A achievement at GCSE. And this has kind of progressed along for the last kind of 10, 20 years really. Um, if it carried on going to 2020, it were, well, 2019, the GCSE results would be something very similar. Um, males have reduced the gap, kind of, if it carried on recently, but there is still a gap. And obviously, you know, girls are doing better, and we're going to look at some of the reasons for that later on. Um, and again, this other graph, if you have a look on this side, you can see all the different subject choices not all of them, but these are mostly A-level subjects and which genders kind of pick them and do well at them. So again, things that are more female heavy would be your social sciences, art and design, whereas things like mathematics, um, computing, things like that, economics are more male heavy. And it's been argued that if you think about future earning potential, the subjects that boys are picking have a higher earning potential, whereas subjects that females choose, um, particularly post-GCSE, so things like childcare, um, hair and beauty, um, anything that's kind of nurturing and caring is generally lower paid than, you know, your mathematics or, you know, computing, things like that. So it could be one of the potential reasons why females do not earn as highly as males. So to finish off, I'll give you two, three mark questions. Now you can email these to me if you would like to, but you don't have to. So Describe one function of education according to functionalism or Marxism. So I'd like you to have a go at both. So I've given you a kind of structure if you want to use it, but you don't have to. So your point is, a function of education according to blah, blah, blah is. So you can state what the point of education is. Is it to prepare you for work? Is it to socialise you? You've got to come up with a suggestion. Then give an example of it. And try and explain how that then is um, kind of fulfilling that function. So, for instance, if I made one up, a function of education, according to, um, let's go with feminism, according to feminism, is to socialise you into your gender roles. Uh, an example would be gendered subject choice, 
um, and this shows that females are more likely to do more caring and nurturing subjects as this fits into their gender socialization.